quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. In an article, 50 Years of the Jetsons, Why the Show Still Matters, the Smithsonian Magazine describes the Jetsons as being born in the golden age of futurism, flying cars, jetpacks, and robot maids. The Jetsons had everything Americans in the space age dreamed about. It was filled with googie style a futuristic style influenced by jets and the atomic age. Googie style features upswept roofs, curvy shapes, and space age designs, symbolic of motion. Like boomerangs and flying saucers, three years before the Jetsons showed Americans a dream of a googie future, Royal launched the Futura typewriter. The Royal Futura offered everything Americans could dream about in a typewriter. Cool looks, aerodynamic curves, and beautiful colors. Want to learn more? Let's go back to the Futura. Howdy folks. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters, where we have used our crystal ball and magic margins to bring you a review of Futures Past. Look closely and you will see the Futura stretching out before your very eyes. Patented in 1957, Royal introduced the Futura line in 1959 with the 400, the 600, and the 800. And what you see here in front of you now is a whole bevy of 800s, with one exception, and this is a Royal Heritage which was essentially a Futura made at the same time but sold exclusively by Montgomery Wards and it really is a Royal uh, 600 uh, in comparison to the 800s and we'll talk about those features and why uh, the heritage is a little bit different and what the 600 and the 400 had to offer as well as the 800 in just a minute. The Royal Futura line was aimed very directly at the student market and they were heavily advertised as I noted, they, they came out in 1959. They had a relatively short run until about 62. But even though their own run was limited, the impact that they had on the Royal uh, Typewriter Company was pretty significant. There were a great number of different machines that came out later that were influenced by the Royal Futura styling. And those included later versions of the Royalite uh, and all of its offshoots, the Eldorado Deluxe, a couple of others. Uh, the, uh, the Heritage we've already talked about, the Aristocrat, the Signet, a Parade, there's any number of them and you can sort of see why. They have just lovely styling with a corrugated front plate, a very wedge shaped angular side and then a very curvy uh, ribbon cover on the top. So we'll get rid of some of these machines so we can focus in on one and then we'll go from there. Welcome to the Space Age. This is the Royal Futura 800. This is called the Americana model. It has a lovely red, white, and blue color scheme, uh, which I think is my favorite of all the different Royal color schemes. And when I look at this machine, as I give you a chance to just check it out in all of its old glory, as it were, you can evaluate for yourselves what I think is just an all-time classic design. What really stands out to me, among many things, is this neat harmony of a very angular wedge shape and that's reminiscent of some of that googie style which is a crazy word I learned today about this angular but space age and angular and curvy at the same time it's kind of a neat combination you always think of burger stands or things in uh, Southern California and we'll roll in some footage of the googie style architecture but this was very much of a period the late uh, late to early space age. So President Eisenhower was in office before Kennedy came in, uh, 1959, 1960, 61, 62. That's when we had the era of the Futura, right at the height of the Mercury program, the space race with Russia. Um, just a great time in American history. This machine 
as you can see, is a fully featured machine. It's the 800. So what does the 800 get you that the 600 and the 400 did not? Well, for starters, as Kevin can show us over here, you have a full keyboard, including a dedicated, we'll lift up, you can see, a dedicated what? Number one key. And then also? A dedicated a magic column set. Well, you have a plus and a minus, and then as he also alluded to, you have a plus and the equals, I should say, but you also have what they call uh, your magic column set, and then, of course, a button to clear. And most of the world could call that a tab, but for some reason it was one magical and two a column and not just a tab. But you could set and clear your tabs right here from the front, which was a nice improvement. And continuing on around beyond our standard equipment, we had something that they like to call... The magic margin. That's right, the magic margin. So I'll zoom in on that. Trademark. Yes, trademark spelled out. That's something unusual. Okay, so the magic margins were there, and what you would do to set your margins on this royal, which was not that new, you would just press the button uh, while you're moving the carriage. You lift, the, press the carriage release lever back here, and then move the carriage, which is impossible to do one hand with a camera. But then you would set your margin, and you could do it um, in theory one-handed, I guess, while not filming. But it's a very easy and quick way to set your margins as opposed to uh, other more cumbersome methods that, that you had. So uh, Royal really liked that feature. Um, we also have the standard components. You have your line selector. So you've got a one, a two, and a three for your line selection. Your magic margin, we mentioned our carriage release, are your platen knobs here. Continuing on to the back, the 800 featured a paper support rabbit ear and also a, uh, oh, this is a little stiff, but a paper support tray. And what's kind of neat, and I haven't seen this on any other typewriter, is that you had a clear plexiglass uh, paper support tray, maybe called an eraser tray. Um, which the 400 and the 600 did, had a metal one. Uh, so just one of the distinguishing features is you got a clear plexiglass one on the 800 model. Another neat feature, uh, of course, you have a paper tray with the nice rollers. Um, you have your tension. Uh, for your feed rollers is controlled here, excuse my reach, but your feed roller tension is controlled here. Another carriage release lever. And Kevin will come around here and show you also, oh, in addition, you have a, a, a corollary to the uh, Smith Corona page gauge. So as you type your uh, paper, you will see this will count down. And I'm not sure if you can quite see the numbers. I'll try to zoom in. But there's numbers imprinted on that and a little arrow. So you set your paper in there and then it'll count down as you go. Nice, yeah. nice little feature. So, so how do you uh, check out the internals of the Royal? Well, that's another neat little function that's sometimes misunderstood. Show us, Kevin. Yeah, you just gently push, push, or stab harshly if you want the logo button here on the lo on the Royal, and it will release this catch mechanism, which then lets you take a look on the inside. And what we see here, another nice feature, is a touch control. And unlike a lot of typewriters, boy, this touch control really makes a difference. I. It's a significant uh, tension increase on the spring under there. Um, also on the right hand side on the inside is your ribbon color selector lever and this has a stencil position in white, uh, black in black, and then red in the red position as well. So we'll leave it in black. Um, the, rib, uh, the Royal had its own uh, ink manufacturing division called Roy Type and we'll talk about those in just a second but they tried to make the changing of the ribbon very easy. So all you have to do here is move these little tines in and then you can just lift the ribbon straight up and out. Um, and it's very, very easy to feed the ribbon back into that uh, vibrator and it just uh, works like a dream. So I mentioned the Roy type uh, cartridges. These are, are those the very things with a little bit of sample of a typing uh, behind us. So Royal had a company called Roy type or a division anyway and they manufactured these. These little semi, I guess, rounded square cartridges contain ribbon, um, and I'm pretty sure these whole things were just disposed of after you were done using them. Um, I actually I popped one open. Let's see if I can get it open now. I don't think the end user was intended to uh, probably access this, but here's where your ribbon would simply spool around. It's interesting because you can actually put uh, them to go out on the right or the left side, depending on how your machine feeds, I guess, or which side you ended up putting this this device because if you have this on the left and it's feeding to the right it's going to kink if you put it here uh, as I've learned from experience. But in any case those are kind of unobtainium now I guess but they're kind of cute to have and I think the idea was simply that you don't get your hands dirty you just collect this little device and 
toss it or reuse it. Sears used a similar thing with some of its uh, later 60s and early 70s machines. They had a little white plastic cover for their ribbon. But it's just a neat little anachronism to uh, see in these machines. Okay, so back to the Royal Futura 800. The Futura was quite a colorful typewriter and it came in a variety of colors. I have every one of those colors with the exception of the meadow green, which is a very lovely pastel green. But what we have here is what they called mist gray on the 800. So mist gray, I'll let you take a look at that. And this one is dirty mist gray because I have not yet had a chance to clean up this machine. So you have the typical off-gassing on the various parts. Of note to me is that the Royal Futura 800 logo is in red on this particular color combination. It's in white on some of the others. So here is your mist gray Royal Futura. And apparently the 400 had a different color gray called pearl gray. I have not seen that. Or just, uh, sorry, the 600 had pearl gray and also blue. So 600 came in pearl gray and blue. The 400 came in, quote, mist gray. And I believe this color combination is mist gray as well, but I'm not sure what the difference between pearl gray and mist gray is. If one of you knows, please let us know or give us an example. This color combination on the 800 is called cocoa. Also, salmon pink is another name for it, but it's really pretty. I'm not sure either of those names actually captures the real color. But you'll see the logo here is white instead of red, uh, and all the other features, of course, are identical. And this one has one of those lovely little uh, shop logos. We'll see if we can zoom in on it. A little bit above the Royal logo, but it is there. Jeans, office machines, and the land before area codes. I always love getting those, especially when they're kind of nice and not uh, too obnoxious. And this one is dead center, but they did a good job, and the red matches, I think, the Royal logo pretty well. Let's take the next a look at the next color. This color combination is periwinkle blue, and it is really lovely. We picked this up locally here from a really nice collector named Scott. And Scott, here's to you. Thanks for sharing this machine with us. We spent a couple more hours cleaning it up since we got it from you, and we think it's really shining. Note the red color on the logo. There are some blemishes, just faint blemishes on this. Uh, and I bring this out not because I don't think it's particular to this particular model, but if you can see this, and again, I'll try to zoom in for you here. Pardon the shaky cam. But there is just a little bit of a blemish here. And I thought at first, well, maybe old Scott got some uh, brake cleaner on it. And that had uh, eaten into the paint ever so slightly. But I don't think so. Because I've actually seen pictures of other blue ones. We only have this one. and I, Or blue, other blue royals. And I think that this is perhaps just a symptom of their paint. I don't know. Now, ironically enough, and it's always me making lemonade out of the lemons, I guess, is I, uh, I kind of think it reminds me of a, a little bit of a fluffy cloud um, on the, a blue background or a blue sky. So that's what I choose to see when I look at it. I'm not sure if you can see it. If you want to see a gray storm cloud, you can see that too. If you want to see brake cleaner, you can see that as well. But just a lovely machine. I really, really like this machine. It cleaned up very well, types very well. That um, leads to the question of what typeface do they have. They call this typeface Merit. It's a Pika typeface. And uh, let's go ahead and type something for you so you can take a look at what it looks like. As I mentioned, it came in the Pika, 10 characters per inch, and also an Elite, 12 characters per inch. They called both Merit as the, as the font. Starting our typing test, we need to make sure our carriage lock is off. The carriage lock is yet another of the advanced features that the 800 offered. Uh, so we'll flick that off. Click it up to make it off and give a sample type test. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Of course, our favorite pangram. Really, really nice font. Just just all around lovely, and as I mentioned, I know you can't tell from that, but uh, the touch selector on this is really uh, powerful. So let's put the carriage back. Uh, I put it in the middle, but um, this is one of the first machines I've really been tempted to put on a very light touch because I'm sort of a ham-fisted typer, but it just feels so lovely on the, on the soft touch. It really makes me want to work on having a lighter touch to do justice to what this machine offers. Um, it really is a wonderful machine. Let's talk a little bit about some of the improvements we made, enhancements we made to this machine. Uh, when we got it, the as is common, the sound insulation 
had was had turned to powder. And I have learned from watching uh, Alton Gansky's video and some others that some of these machines, like this one, came with a foam insulation, okay? So it was just completely crumbled and, and ridiculous when we got it, doing no good and making a mess. So we went ahead and decided to replace it with a pretty closely matched uh, yoga mat, which we which was quite a bit thicker than the foam, but which still doesn't uh, conflict and really helps deaden the sound. And we're uh, kind of kind of pleased with how that turned out. So you have uh, we had felt here or actually foam here that is also uh, completely petrified and turned to dust. So we put in brand new felt. I thought a yoga mat might be a little too thick up here, but we place that with felt. Uh, we replaced. You can't see it, um, but inside this wedge-shaped panel, there is another soundproofing element, and that is where we have some more of our nifty light blue, periwinkle blue yoga mat. Um, and you can see it a little bit if you're hunting for it here in the back as you're typing. But I'm real happy with how that turned out. It's one of the small little improvisations you have to make. And I'll pick up the phone if you'll bear with me. Another improvisation you have to make on a lot of these cases is they come with a shattered handle. So let's look at the original handle here. Um, very nice utilitarian plastic handle, but it seems that this plastic uh, really wasn't designed to last for 60 years into the future. Although these machines were supposedly certified for 96 year typing tests, they didn't uh, certify the handles for 96 years, I guess, because these things will often be gone or missing, as were these two machines here. Um, but I'm pretty proud with how these worked out. These were. Uh, fabricated leather collars with Chicago screws and um, we trimmed them down and I really uh, I think they really turned out nicely I hate it when you have a case that doesn't have a handle because uh, it's so awkward to carry these but uh, we're pretty pleased with how this turned out I didn't make this uh, case but you know what it works as well it came to us this way which is another evidence point for me that these handles just tend to go so let's be nice to that handle and oh also nice to this handle and go from there Rounding out our discussion of cases, this is uh, the case for the Royal Heritage sold through Montgomery Wards. It has a fiberglass cover which is kind of made to resemble a tweed case. Interestingly enough, I haven't. there is another variant of this case which has more of a cloth cover and which is really, really pretty. I once had a typewriter I called Don Draper's typewriter because, simply because of the case. It was so pretty, so stylish, so sharp. Uh, people corrected me immediately to say that he used an Olympia, but uh, give me some creative license, folks. Um, in any case, no pun intended, we have, wow, that's a pretty case on the inside. That is a turquoise, as my pen is showing. Um, not cleaned, of course, but uh, <laughs> really pretty. It's, it really makes the typewriter for me. This is the heritage. Um, I wish they all had a case this pretty on the inside. It's one of the prettiest interior cases I've ever seen. I know that's pretty specific, but I just really like this case. We all have different favorites of cases, but this is such a slick one. I really, really enjoy it. This again is the Royal Heritage, which is our stand-in for a Royal 600. I love the way that they matched the ribbon release cover, this turquoise blue, with the blue of the case. I don't know why I like that so much. The overall case, uh, machine is, is fine. It's a little bit uh, drab. Maybe you'd call that a southwestern color or a sand. Um, and maybe that's why they're going with the turquoise. I just, just thought of that. Maybe that's an intentional thing. I think sand and southwest and turquoise is a trendy color for 2020, 2019. But we'll see. All the way back in 1959, 6061, uh, they had this. But here you go. Royal Heritage in white. The metal uh, paper tray. Not um, plastic or acrylic. And uh, other than that, pretty much a very similar machine to our Futura Brothers. Uh, just another really nice machine made exclusively for Montgomery Wards. And since we're on the topic of modifications, uh, this is a blue that did not come from the factory. This is a navy blue. I haven't even, uh, I've just set it here on top. It's not uh, yet been reattached to this machine. But this was a Royal 800 in the misty gray. And I thought, you know, I've got quite a few of these. And uh, I'd like to make one my own. So I customized this with a Royal uh, dark navy blue. Uh, I still have some sanding and polishing to do, but I think it turned out quite nice. Uh, this brings us to a summary of the pros and cons of this line of typewriters, the Royal Futura 4, 6, and 800. Pros, Kevin. Um, it has a great googie good looks. Great googie good looks. Say that 12 times fast. Really pretty. So we talked about the futuristic style of the Jetsons uh, in the early 60s, late 1950s, the boomerang, uh, the 
angular signs, uh, symbols of momentum and motion, and this typewriter really has it. It really represents an embodiment of a positive and optimistic future ideal. It's just a really happy time in the American century, uh, and we're glad to have an artifact right from the smack dab middle of it. What's another, brother? And speaking of happy, um, it has really gorgeous colors, and it looks like it came from, like, I don't know, a museum or something. Yeah, gorgeous colors from a museum. So we talked about the color periwinkle blue, uh, the meadow green, the salmon or cocoa, and then the, um, the gray, which is also very nice and understated, uh, and the uh, all-American red, white, and blue. Speaking of all, what else do we have, Kevin? Um, we have an all-metal cast aluminum frame. That's right. So it's pretty strong. It is pretty strong, and it is uh, nice to work on. One thing that you have to watch out for, and this is really the only con, so I'm jumping the gu uh, gun a little bit, these two halves come together. And one funny thing is, when you're putting this whole machine back together, if you've taken it apart, it's very easy <laughs> to put this wedge component on upside down and of course it won't fit but uh, it's kind of awkward and embarrassing to try to do that so make sure the notch here is facing up when you try to put it back and ask me how I know that but uh, you just have to pay attention a little bit to how you put it back together but it's pretty straightforward okay so other thing we like is a full feature set and it has a dedicated number one key a plus key and tabs and magic markers. that's right Magic margins are a little hyperbolic in their name, of course, but they are very convenient to use. You can set and slide with one hand, and it's on left or right hand, and it makes sense. You do have to watch for those. Sometimes people will hit them, and they'll slide zing into the middle, and people will think, oh, my typewriter doesn't work, because they don't realize they've just reset the margins. All right. Oh, and the last little f feature I think is kind of nice is I really like this little button to release the uh, ribbon cover. Um, it's just kind of classy to touch that. Um, and you always got to watch out for people who don't know trying to yank that off and uh, snapping that. And that's one of the common broken things you find on the Futura 800, but that's certainly not its fault. We already covered the con about be careful with your adjustment of your case when you're putting it together so that you don't um, cause a bind uh, and cause scraping in your carriage. Final thought, and thank you so much for spending your time with us exploring these typewriters. It's funny sometimes how things happen by accident. I never intended to get quite so many of these Royal Futuras, and I just ended up collecting them over time, and I really do enjoy them. Um, they have such a wide variety of colors. They're wonderful to type on, and they kind of set, the, they, they're so emblematic of a certain period of time in this Googie architecture and this Jetsons era. I hope you've enjoyed uh, traveling back, and we'll all be looking for our jetpacks and flying cars just around the corner. Thanks. Goodbye. Please like, subscribe, and share.